Letrozole blocks muscle growth. Letrozole prevents the conversion of testosterone into estrogen. And use of letrozole can result in having no estrogen whatsoever. And that might sound good in the beginning because we think of estrogen as a female hormone and, and bodybuilding and trying to get a very masculine physique or trying to minimize female characteristics like the soft, fat, watery look. I don't mean that in an insulting way. <laughs> I mean, I like soft, fat, watery women. I like women with a lot of estrogen. But as a man, we want to get as dry and as hard as possible, which is kind of the opposite. Well, letrozole is dosed usually at 2.5 milligrams per serving, and it kills the conversion of estrogen for quite a few days after taking it. Uh, and you can actually adjust your dosage and frequency of how often you take it to adjust the amount of um, prevention of estrogen conversion that's occurring. But the problem with letrozole is it's so strong you can eliminate 100% of your estrogen. Now that differs from other aromatase inhibitors. See, aromatase is the enzyme that our body uses to convert testosterone to estrogen. There are other uh, aromatase inhibitors like exemestane, arimidex, anastrozole, aromasin, and those don't prevent 100% conversion to estrogen. So that's why usually those are my preference because those may reduce estrogen, let's say by 80%. That way we at least get to keep normal levels of estrogen in our bodies. Now, why do we need estrogen for muscle growth? Well, there's a lot of studies that have been done that prove that estrogen is necessary for muscle growth. But I don't just believe the studies and read that that's gonna be actually applicable in our world of bodybuilding or trust all of the variables of that study. I have to see the real world application. So what made me decide to do this video is I've been talking to a very experienced bodybuilder who did a one year cycle of letrozole. And here was his results. He gained no muscle whatsoever an entire year of running uh, high dosages of steroids because there was no estrogen. Now, uh, he looked dry, he looked hard because he had no estrogen in his body. In fact, he looked the best he ever looked in his life. But at the end of the year, to gain no more muscle and make no more progress, think about how much food he ate. Think about how often he trained. Think about how hard he was trying to build muscle and not to make progress. That's just depressing. And so people can take letrozole or a high dosage of aromatase inhibitors and think that they're doing great on them because they look great because they're not holding water and they get tighter and they get harder but they're not actually building any new muscle cells and they're not actually growing the size of their muscles so especially when we use, are using a growth hormone uh, estrogen is really important because the point that we're using growth hormone for is hyperplasia which is building new muscle cells that's the difference between using steroids and growth hormone and actually, you really need a combination of both. But people that are doing a lot of steroids, their muscle cells are getting a lot bigger, but they're not necessarily getting new muscle cells. And Coach Trevor is huge, and he doesn't have to do anything to maintain it because he has that permanent investment in developing those new muscle cells. Well, estrogen, according to the studies, is critical, important, necessary in developing new muscle cells, satellite cells, stem cells, to become new muscle cells. And it's also necessary for the conversion of human growth hormone to IGF, which is the real reason why human growth hormone is so powerful, which is the reason why IGF LR3, like the one at enhancedathlete.com or other peptide companies, if it's real, is one of the most powerful permanent muscle building compounds that exists today. So we lose the estrogen, we lose the development of new muscle growth, but we look good temporarily. That's why I agree with lowering our estrogen, if not sometimes crashing it. For a bodybuilding show depending on whether we got to come in fuller or tighter i mean if someone's got to come in fuller we don't want to crash estrogen because estrogen does help you hold on to water in the muscle and help you carb up and help you stay full but if someone wanted to look extremely dry at the sacrifice of uh, muscle size which oftentimes is the case in bodybuilding especially if trying to make weight then that is the time to crash estrogen completely. That is the time to use letrozole. Another exception to using uh, letrozole that I totally agree with using letrozole in is uh, if using ment. Ment is the most powerful, M-E-N-T is the most powerful steroid that exists today, injectable that I know of that has reasonably low side effects. 
uh, 23 times more powerful than testosterone, but it converts to estrogen a lot to the point where if, if I'm taking a high dosage of mint, I would have to take letrozole. Nothing else would be strong enough to mitigate the, the estrogen conversion from the mint. Uh, the other time I would use letrozole is if the gyno or estrogen symptoms were developing so quickly that I needed something extremely powerful to knock it out temporarily until I could adjust my hormones on a more permanent basis. So to temporarily stop the side effects from getting any worse. So in conclusion, we do want estrogen in our bodies. Letrozole is the most powerful uh, blocker of the conversion of testosterone to estrogen. It's in a powerful tool, just like all the other drugs and steroids out there, uh, when used in moderation, used correctly. But don't overdo it and crash your estrogen and sacrifice new muscle growth. This is not medical advice. Don't do anything that we do without a uh, doctor's prescription, recommendation, and this is not legal advice. Be swollen, swole, my friends of freedom, pioneers of human evolution.